Good morning and welcome to Elevenses once again. It's uh, the 7th of October. It's a nice sunny Wednesday here in London at the moment. Um, the monsoon that we had over the weekend seems to have disappeared for the time being. Um, so what have we got in the news for you today? Well, uh, Ducati are building a new multi-strada that uh, comes with radar. Kawasaki get uh, Skyhook Showa suspension one of their bikes. Honda released the bike with one of the silliest names ever. Uh, Daneasy have purchased the boot manufacturer TCX. Uh, Lowestoft turns out to be a motorcycle theft hotspot and an Australian car and bike insurance is attempting to settle a class action for selling useless insurance. Um, so uh, grab yourself a brew, sit down and uh, Let's carry on with all that news. Right, okay, the um, first item here, the race to equip motorcycles with the same sort of rider assist devices that have been increasingly appearing on cars over the last few years has, um, has hotted up. Um, Ducati have started production on what it claims is the first motorcycle in the world which is equipped with front and rear radar. Um, now, the system is developed by Bosch and it um, operates on the or will operate on the V4 Multistrada which is due to come out at some point in the very near future. Um, oops that's the wrong picture, hang on a minute we'll come back to that one. Um, the radar units are uh, about the size of an action cam it said and they weigh 190 grams each so um, unlike a lot of sort of technology, it won't add too much to the weight or bulk of the motorcycle. The front radar is designed to allow the machine to have adaptive cruise control, um, which would help the bike adjust its distance automatically to the vehicle ahead whilst riding at between 30 and 160 kph. Uh, the rear radar is designed to detect vehicles in the rider's blind spot. Um, and it can also alert you to vehicles approaching at high speed. Not much more is known about the Multistrada V4, except it has a new light and compact V4 engine, and uh, it's, uh, we don't even know what it looks like yet. It's due to be shown off for the first time at uh, one of the bike shows, or virtual bike shows, I should say, uh, on November the 4th. Meanwhile, um, Kawasaki, let's uh, get the picture up, are upgrading their electronic suspension on their Versys 1000 SE. Now, it's um, you might argue that the Versys uh, hasn't actually been a particularly strong seller uh, for Kawasaki, so you might be wondering why it's getting all these uh, tech upgrades, but it's possibly, uh, the sales problem is possibly because it blurs the line between Adventure Bike and Grand Tourer, um, it kind of had this, has the styling of an adventure bike, but uh, the the, the uh, straight four uh, motor is sort of more grand tour, really, isn't it? Um, and in terms of comparisons, BMW's GS range sells five times as many bikes. Um, but that's possibly why Kawasaki's thrown lots of technology at it. Uh, the current model actually has smartphone connectivity, it has riding modes, it has a quick shifter, it has Kawasaki's traction control system, it has intelligent ABS, and it's already got cruise control. Um, and it was already fitted with Kawasaki's semi-active Showa developed uh, electronic suspension system, which um, goes by the wonderful name of Kex, K E C S, um, and that's also uh, in, on the H2 uh, and the ZX 10R, incidentally. And Kex uses basically built in accelerometers um, to measure the vertical suspension movement. So then what it can do is it can adjust the damping to suit the bumpiness of the road. And of course, uh, the rider can also manually adjust damping and optimize rear preload to carry a passenger. Um, but the new system, the Skyhook system, goes a step further. Now, um, 
I hadn't actually heard of Skyhook, so I'm quite interested to look it up. And basically, the, uh, the 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 idea is: imagine your motorcycle was sort of suspended from a helicopter, um, and literally, uh, the idea is that you, the machine would balance nice and level, um, as if it was hanging from that imaginary hook. Now, as it rides along the road the skyhook system is to try to achieve that level balance at all times so in other words the front and rear suspension start to move independently of one another but together they aim to reduce fork dive at the front reduce squat at the rear and as the bike hits bumps the front would move and then the rear would move and the bike would glide smoothly over the bumps at least that's the idea the damping rates and the uh, would be constantly altered um so the system uses lots of sensors basically to measure the um where the suspension is actually moving um to quote Kawasaki, maintaining the motorcycle's vertical position with the minimal disturbance. The SC um, version, as I said, already has a sort of semi-active suspension. So this looks like more of a change to the uh, the, the algorithms which control the system rather than a revamp of the, the mechanical parts. Full details haven't yet been announced in the press, but uh, it's suggested that the bike could come to Europe as early as the middle of this month. Um, so, okay. The, um, da, 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 da. Right, so that was the uh, the um kawasaki um if that's all too high tech for you have a look instead at this little gem i actually rather like this now um current bike manufacturers do have a bit of a reputation for building things with silly names and uh, this particular honda is no exception it's called the highness cb 350 but of course they can't spell highness uh, as you would normally expect to see it it's actually spelled H apostrophe N E S. Now it's the complete antithesis of the high tech, high performance, and undeniably high cost Kawasaki. And I actually quite like the look of this bike. I have to say, it sort of uh, it's, it's set to hark back to the 70s and the old CB uh, 250, 360 uh, sort of style Hondas. Um, but to me, I have to say, there's a bit more of the XBR about it, probably because it's a single cylinder engine rather than a twin. Um, but um, that bike there is uh, propelled. It's a fairly modest uh, 348 cc motor. It's a single cylinder. It's air cooled, as you can see, and it produces a, a remarkably modest, by modern standards, 20.8 horsepower. That 0.8 probably comes in quite useful when you've only got 20.8 in total. Um, engine revs at 5.5 when that it hits that peak power. Uh, but peak torque, 30 newton meters, comes in as low as 3,000 RPM. So probably it will undoubtedly pull well from low revs, but it will run out of puff uh, to anything like speed. Um, the five-speed gearbox has a, um, what I suggest would probably be a totally unnecessary slipper clutch. Um, and as you can see, it rides on oldie worldy uh, twin rear shocks and uh, an 18-inch rear with a 19-inch front wheel combination i uh, don't often see 19 inch front wheels on motorcycles these days however you'll notice that unlike the sort of spoked uh, wheels that you find on some of the other replicas uh, or sort of neo retros as uh, somebody called them um, it's a tube tubeless fitment i should say um, curb weights 181 kilos which seems a little bit heavy um, but they have kept the high tech down. Uh, you get a, a Honda smartphone voice control system. Not sure what that does. Haven't bothered to look it up. Uh, you get a full LED headlight, um, which if it lights your way better than the old glow worms on the uh, those 70s bikes, is I'm all for. And full dual channel ABS, which is also something I um, I have to say I'm appreciative of on, on modern bikes. Um, I'm not really sure that the 20 horsepower needs Honda's selectable torque control system, though. Um, with the modest performance, I doubt it will hit to 80 miles an hour. Uh, it comes a fairly modest price. It's around £2,000. But the, here's the bad news. Um, although there are rumours of a custom and retro sports bike in development from this model, I don't expect to see it here anytime soon. It's another model going on sale in the world's biggest market for two-wheelers, uh, which is India. Um, okay, what else have we got to talk about? Well, um, 
Danese, the Italian motorcycle riding gear manufacturer, have added TCX boots to their collection. Um, Danese uh, is um, controlled by a Bahrain Investment Corp in, uh, fund uh, since 2015, already own uh, AGV, and um, they also have their own line of motorcycle boots, obviously enough, so quite how TCX will fit in is anybody's guess. A statement from Cristiano Silly, the Danese Group CEO, doesn't shed an awful lot of light. It's one of those statements which says a lot but doesn't say anything. He says, uh, improving safety in dynamic sports has always been the Danese mission. We're committed to ongoing research into innovative systems that protect athletes from head to toe. We're extremely proud of this operation. TCX shares the, with Danese the passion for products and adds technical and development skills that are fundamental in motorbike footwear. I take the opportunity to welcome the TCX team. We cannot start waiting together. So a lot of words uh, for no actual explanation of what Danese intend to do with TCX. Um, what's my worry here? Well, Danese has always had a claim to making high quality riding kit. Um, I have to be perfectly honest and say that having seen the results of a number of crashes uh, of people wearing Danese kit, um, you know, I've not worn it myself, but I have some very good friends who have crashed in it. Um, I would not be too happy to uh, claim that it's high tech, high quality myself. And in fact, the company was at the forefront of the pushback against the old CE clothing standards, arguing that they were too difficult to meet. Um, pressure uh, which resulted, you may recall, in the watering down of the original level one, level two CE standards to the new A, double A and triple A standard system, which arguably leaves riders less protected than the old ratings. Now, the thing about TCX is that whilst they've been making boots only fairly recently, since 1999 in fact, the Treviso-based company introduced the Oxtar brand. Now, if you have a memory as long as mine, um, Oxtar were, I think, the very first boot manufacturer to introduce CE-approved boots. And they rapidly gained a reputation for high quality at a relatively modest price. I know they were a particular favourite uh, with motorcycle instructors. Um, that I worked with. So it's a bit, um, you know, a bit, uh, a bit sad to see them disappearing into um, Danese's hands. I have my doubts about what will happen long term. Um, and right, okay, just to remind you, you are watching Elevensies with Kevin Williams here from Survival Skills Rider Training. And uh, you can tune in um, at regularly on Wednesdays and Sundays at 11. And if you missed the show live, uh, obviously you can catch up here on Facebook uh, later when it uh, when I've finished. Uh, but you can also head over to my YouTube channel, Survival Skills UK, and you can head over to my coffee channel too, where you'll find the show repeated. And you'll also find links to it on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and all sorts of social media places generally. Um, right, okay, so what else is in the news? Well, um, Suffolk Town Lowestoft. Um, it's mostly famous for being the most easterly town in the UK and thus the first place to see the sunrise every morning and for being the birthplace of composer Benjamin Britten. Uh, its attractions, uh, which will no doubt be itching to head straight towards as I finish this article, um, include a blue flag beach, two piers, a wildlife park, an award-winning theme park and a busy theatre. But uh, in recent months, it seems to have turned into a hot spot for motorcycle theft. And Suffolk police are investigating no less than 24 separate motorcycle thefts that began back in July. Um, they said that the motorcycle thefts had taken place in and around the town and surrounding areas. And that the majority happened on a weekday night, generally between 1 and 3 a.m., uh, with a number of the thefts happening overnight on a Thursday into Friday. And police spokesman said that eight thefts took place in September and they did recover the bike in six cases. Half of those offences involved Hondas. And most thefts were from driveways, front gardens, residential car parks and a couple from rear gardens. Um, so clearly someone is cruising around looking for motorcycles to steal. Um, if eight of them, eight thefts and six recovered in September, 
um, suggests that possibly they're not looking at big bikes. There's no details on what models are going missing, but it may be joyriders. Uh, who knows? But so uh, just have a you know heads up there, just in case you're thinking of heading off to the Suffolk coast for a bit of late autumn, early morning sunshine. Um, do be alert. It might be a good idea to put some extra security uh, into your bike panniers as you head off. Um, okay anything else to say um don't forget if you want something to read you can still head over to my lulu site and uh, buy my books over there um, three books there's uh, science of being seen which is the uh, short version of the um, presentation and then there's mind over motorcycle tarmac tactics and survival skills which is the uh, three books about better riding and they all take a slightly different tack to getting you up to speed on advanced riding technique. Um, okay, what else to say? Uh, well, over in Australia, um, the Insurance Australia Group, IAG, has announced that it will uh, is prepared to pay out a total of 138 million Australian dollars to settle a class action against two of its subsidiaries. Now, um, what's been going? What's all this about? Well, the class action was taken out in April 2019, and uh, in September 2019, at a hearing, uh, IAG senior counsel Jeremy Kirk told the court that the class action could run to the order of 600 million to 1 billion Australian dollars. Um, and Tim Potter, a spokesman for the company, said that the insurance giant was therefore defending the class action and would follow the directions of the court. Now, first of all, what is a class action? Well, it's actually something brought by one person, known as the applicant, uh, on his or her behalf, and on behalf of a group of people, um, the class, who have a, a similar complaint, basically, against the... Um, a person or persons, uh, in this case, Swan and Insurance Australia Limited. So they're all, as you see, they're commenced in situ circumstances where the applicant and other people all have a similar claim. Now, what does it involve? Well, it revolves around add-on insurance products, which were sold by Swan through motor vehicle uh, and motorcycle dealers uh, to people and businesses who purchased uh, cars and bikes uh, between 1st of January 2008 and August 2017 inclusive. Now you've probably been uh, sold or sold something similar to this or at least been offered by dealers in this country. Um, so how did it work? Well basically the dealers take a commission um, up to 51% of the premium actually goes straight into the dealer's pocket so it's nice little earning for the dealer. And dealers are also given bonuses and gifts as incentives to sell as many of these policies as possible. But what the class action claims is that these add-on products were of little or no financial value to the purchaser. So what are these add-on products that you might be asked to part with hard cash for? Well, this is what Swan was selling. Uh, loan protection insurance, walkaway insurance, which I assume uh, covers you if you change your mind, having uh, agreed to a deal. Protection plus insurance, no idea what that is. Gap cover insurance, which is also known as purchase price protection insurance. Presumably that kicks in if the price changes between ordering and uh, accepting a vehicle, I have no idea. Uh, motor vehicle mechanical breakdown insurance, also known as warranty assist. Um, that's fairly clear. And tire and rim insurance. Um, now, uh, you know, I've, I've been um, offered many of these kind of things myself, and I've always turned them down as uh, pretty pointless, um, particularly on a new bike, of course. But um, you know, even on a used bike, um, the bike is covered under side of goods in the UK, and I assume there's something similar in Australia. Um, it, interestingly, uh, IAG exited these business areas. They apparently sold the rights to distribute these uh, add-on insurance uh, deals um, in August 2016 through motor vehicle dealers, and they stopped distributing them uh, through, to, through motorcycle dealers two years later. Um, so the offer um, to settle this deal doesn't cover the likelihood of the entire cost to uh, the people who bought this insurance and so at the moment the settlement is still subject to approval by the Federal Court of Australia. All right, okay, so um, that's pretty much it for today. 
Um, I hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget, if you have, you can pop over to coffee.com uh, forward slash survival skills. And for three pounds, you can access um, a lot of free content. There's two and a half years worth almost of um, information up there already that's come over from my Facebook page. I'll be sticking old posts up there from my back catalogue. Um, and if you become a regular subscriber, you get access to extra content too. Um, but there's plenty of free stuff over there to read anyway. So do pop over there and have a look. Um, don't forget, my courses are still available. Um, I'm still running... Um, motorcycle training courses for the foreseeable future as long as the weather stays reasonably fine uh, the bike courses will continue to run uh, i may well have to run through the winter this year to try and make up some of the shortfall earlier in the spring and if you're looking at online coaching don't forget i will be offering or am offering uh, inexpensive uh, coaching sessions on various topics uh, basically you set the topic you tell me what you want and i'll put the lesson together um, more on that on my Facebook page. Um, so thank you very much indeed for tuning in again today. Um, hopefully I'll be seeing you on the next show, which will be on Sunday at 11. So uh, for now, thanks very much for watching. Uh, this is Kevin Williams and 11s is saying cheerio for now.